so I just got back from a local electric motor shop guy he told me I'd probably have more money in rebuilding this thing than just buying a new one so I got a new one I got a little bit different one that one's a I think like 15 gallon a minute one this one's eight this one's a little more heavy duty from the quick 10 minute look up that I did on it so what we're gonna do here I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing back together so that way if I need any parts off of it I have it pack rat I know it's broke but whatever go throw it back together so we have it and then we are going to put this new girl back together got a new filter some th thread sealant and I got a swivel for the end of my hose so um, we got the new pump it's just pump only I didn't need anything else so yeah let's um I'm all take that up and throw it back together. So, got the new pump. Let's get this all uh, put together here. Why they don't stick with that on it? Beyond me. the wiring harness off the other one. Got a lot done since last time I picked it up. When uh, last time I caught up was 
soldered that together. Well, I decided to take it back apart, cut it out, and I added this plug onto it. So that way, when I flip my fuel tank on, this will also go live and I can have another source of power in the bed of my truck because really w when you turn the fuel tank on it just stays off until you flip it on so that's what that's for basically I'm always carrying an extra battery when uh, I uh, have my uh, oh weed sprayer in the bed of my truck now i can just make it to where i can just plug in and not have to do that so yeah so now what i'm doing is this pump has two different style inlets so this plug was up here so i'm gonna take this plug out put it over here i'm gonna put this 90 on yeah i know it's probably um 90 is gonna kick it down but it actually 90s in this channel so i'm gonna do that so that way when i put the nipple on the fuel filter will be right here because if i don't then the fuel filter is going to be way out here and i don't really want it hanging out past my truck so let's uh get this hooked up Got the pump tightened down, filter on, and all that happy stuff. The only thing I'm seeing now is that pump might hit my back glass. I don't know, we'll have to see. But we're gonna test this out for the time being. So let's uh, do this. We're just gonna temporary Hook this thing up. I just want to make sure before we get any farther ahead that it works. Let me show a good camera angle here. Maybe, maybe not. All right. She does. Well, sounds like she's working. All right. She works. 
All right, so I figured out how how to do it. So here's my extra wire, and I'm just gonna set the nozzle right down into the bed because with this new pump, it don't hit the glass. It's nowhere near close. But when I set the nozzle in there, hitting bumps is gonna hit the glass. So yeah, that's the uh, setup I'm gonna go with for now. Boy, it'd be really nice if it was on the opposite side. Cause like if the pump was over there and the fill was over there, and be this whole ordeal will be way better but two big reasons why i don't want the pump over there a i always pull up the gas pumps on that side and b you always fill equipment from the passenger side because you're usually parked against a road so yeah so now oh boy you guys are really really dirty so now we're gonna get my toolbox put back together. Hooray. All right, so I'm gonna change this part up instead of doing like a time lapse style. Your guys' a little holder there. But I gotta go show what all I keep in my truck. So at the very bottom, I have a J hook to hook on the cars that are stuck and don't have uh, tow hooks. Because believe it or not. They make cars that way this nowadays. Totally stupid, in my opinion. Totally, totally stupid. So, I mean, I do such a big realm of work and need to be prepared for so much. Like, really, it'd be nice to have a service body. I'm so hit or miss on a service body right now. I use my truck is my daily plus my work truck. Um, so, I, I just like this setup. Plus, you gotta have a special service body to have a gooseneck hookup and to be able to do fifth wheel so that just ain't ain't, all, ain't gonna really cut it for me so i keep uh a salt a big pair of channel locks a pry bar another pry bar uh bottle jack sledgehammer my framing hammer Weed eater string, roll of paper towels, scotch grite pads. Now you gotta remember I own a cleaning company as well. Um, so some of the stuff I keep in my truck is in case I gotta go clean a uh, property or something. It's it just part of the part of the job. So um, you know I got grill cleaner, PB blaster, brake cleaner, window cleaner, brake fluid, electrical cleaner. Goo Gone liquid wrench, toilet bowl cleaner, an assortment of nails and screws. Uh, and there's my lockout kit. I got this pipe, just cheater pipe. I got a broom and mop handle down there and a breaker bar. I got my mop pad back there. That's kind of what I keep right in here and let me go ahead and put some more stuff in and we'll i'll show you then all right so i got some more stuff in here this bag kind of just has a ball peen hammer smaller vice grips pipe wrenches uh my bigger wrenches sawzall blades deep well and shallow well 38 sockets over here this bag it just don't get used as much so it kind of gets buried but it's got a, a volt tester tire pressure gauge torques allens chisels various selection of screwdrivers picks scissors 
Uh, there's a plug kit. Um, PVC pipe cutters. Uh, ratchets. Um, this bag here has got chains and straps in it. So I got one uh, two inch strap in it. Uh, ratchet strap and then I got uh, probably a 15 20 foot log chain in there as well I keep a snatch block on here just so um, if I have one of the if I have the winch because over there I got a in the receiver mounted winch if I have it and I forget my other snatch block there I got one so yeah, that one there should really be hooked to there, but we had them both in here because we needed both of them on a job not too long ago. So it's just kind of how it panned out. So let me, uh, oh, and I got, that's my Slim Jim. And then I got just one of these little suction pumps. Uh, those work good for uh, just getting water out of various places that you need to. Uh, I use it mainly for um, if we have a uh, air conditioner in the summer uh, and the pump's not working and it fills the pan up, I can use that along with this random empty water bottle that I keep in there because it's big and the hole's big enough to stick it down in and I can pump it out a little bit at a time. So that way I ain't carrying a huge five gallon bucket. So. Let me throw some more junk in here and we'll go from there. Alright, so I got some more stuff in here. This here, it's got my half inch impact in it. I kind of keep it for quick access. So if I got to change a tire or something on the side of the road, this here is kind of like my go bag when I'm on a service call or whatnot, I can just grab it. It's kind of how I've tried to set all this up. So everything's in bags so it has a purpose and I can pull it out. Like this bag here is my drill with drill bits, uh, any drill bit or accessory you may need for a drill gun. This bag here is full of hot tub chemicals. You've probably seen that on the channel. And this guy here is all my half inch sockets. Uh, this little garden hose here is just for um, rinsing out hot tub filters in case there is not a big garden hose on site, which we do have on some occasions. I got a small one that I can just pull out and get it done. And yeah, let me, I'm really, let me put just a few more things in. All right, so this is how I, my gooseneck setup is. If anybody wonders why I got bolts down in here, it's because when my uh, safety chain holders go down in, they're a big pain in the butt because I got a rubber mat in here. So I just kind of pry them up, leave them up, and then put those bolts in. And So this bag here just has straps, trash bags, cables, bungee cords, extra locks. Um, I got my hot tub net. And then I just kind of, this is like the catch all miscellaneous batteries, pencils, razor blade knife, extra battery, garden hose in, drill bit fifth wheel lock, chalk box, tape, just kind of random stuff. And then my leaf blower just kind of sits in there like that. Got a random thing. Oh, and I have a hot tub pump down in there, an extension cord, a broom, and dust pan that pretty much does it for the top of the toolbox or that toolbox this toolbox sometimes in the bed of my truck sometimes not 
right now all it's got is a thing of screws in it i use this just for extra storage um in case because nine times out of ten my job trailer is on a job and i don't carry some stuff in my truck like a grinder or a a sawzall circular saw framing gun and if i'm going to do a little one day job or something i'll just throw the stuff that i need in there and that'll take up for the extra storage um because it's it can fit all in there like we've had sawzall circular saw uh fin saw framing gun all in there with everything that's in there but it's really tight and hard to get to anything so um kind of the rest of the stuff i carry i got those two four by four chunks and two two by four chunks those are just like to disconnect the trailer in case i need to this weird little contraption if you guys follow the channel you know what it is it is just my gopro holder i just stick it down in the dirt and then i got this piece that goes in there Does anybody know what that is that is a snake catcher so you don't have to touch them because i hate snakes so that stays in there um usually in the summer comes out in the winter and then that goes right there that's my hot tub vac vacuum that uh, sucks the debris and stuff out and that's really other than my spud bar i always keep a spud bar in my truck so spud bar stays in uh big reason why i use that is on trailers how the leaf springs work sometimes they get locked up and i need that to pry them back down but i haven't had that problem the dump trailer was notorious for it haven't had that problem since i rebuilt leaf springs on the dump trailer you can catch that in a two-part series on the channel so yeah let me uh open up the back seat here and i'll show you the rest of the stuff all right so under my seats here i keep just a various selection of thread tape or yeah thread tape plug kit cotter keys um, self tappers under there i just got some miscellaneous batteries and wire connections um more tire plug things wire boost clamp ipr this is all six liter stuff i did have a six liter in the fleet at one point just kind of common things uh hdmi cable wire ipr valve for a six liter like i said used to have one i still have one it just might not be it's just i don't run it right now because the thing is so freaking temperamental um i got a gas leak detector hose clamps bolts nuts american bolts nuts metric uh anchor kit let me flip my seat down here so back here i got more batteries o-rings screws clamps bolts plumbing cleaner and glue some more nuts and we'll get to the other side here in just a second and that goes on the seat so i always have two car seats in the truck because i got two little ones still in seats so i try to be prepared for everything this is the other car seat it's just got a bunch of finished nails in it um then you take a job new sawzall blades in the door i keep an extra set of measuring cups for hot tub chemicals phone charger uh silicone spray this is mainly for my doors because they squeak and that's what quiets them down simple green and then you know you got little ones can't go nowhere without them. some trucks so over here is pretty basic i got jumper cables my rain jacket 
my uh, snake, uh, window cleaner. I got a tripod for my GoPro. This goes to a job and this goes to a job. So to these circular saw blades and these paddle bits, uh, just some new stuff that we need for stock for our job trailer over there in that seat i keep an extra bottle of water uh paper towels a dog leash my fire extinguisher there and then we fold this down and back here we got more toe straps couldn't tell you what's in this bag can't remember oh another set of jumper cables oh i lied underneath this seat's not jumper cables and then this thing that nobody can figure out what it is it's a satellite kit so i can uh program satellites in case a tree limb or something falls and the guests are complaining that they don't have tv this bag here has my winch controller and uh extra a 20 foot or 30 foot lead of two gauge wire that quick connects right there so I can run the winch off the back of the truck or I can run it clear to the gooseneck or be within 20 feet of it this side I keep an extra cell phone trailer light I don't know why it's in there cell phone case more little trucks more electrical cleaner that's really about all it so yeah it's uh been a heck of a day so let's uh i'm gonna finish getting this truck buttoned up oh yeah we gotta still wire this thing i forgot about that i gotta wire run the wire wire the pump back up um oh also so if anybody wants to complain there is three fuses on this pump so you can see up there my extension right here you see the little fuse end about half a little over halfway down so there's a fuse on on it right there and and each one of these switches has a 15 amp fuse plus they're backed up with another inline fuse for the uh yeah for whatever it's powering and there's the wire that i cut for the uh thing and then this is kind of the wiring mess this is all plow stuff here all my grounds and everything all tucked away nice and pretty in there and then over here you got this is a fuse for my um winch setup this fuse here is for something cannot remember what it goes to but it's for something i'll remember that day it blows but everything has fuse beyond fuse beyond fuse so I, I just i can't stand not having fuses when i was younger one of my first trucks i almost burnt the thing down to the ground because i got a short i didn't believe in fuses i was just kid couldn't tell me nothing my dad told me i should fuse everything well i didn't didn't want to take the time of course you know kid didn't want to spend the money on it i almost burned it down luckily enough um i happened to have a wrench in my door that would fit my battery and I was able to disconnect the battery and stop it. But, well, I'm going to get this wired up and then I'll show you guys the after product. And then we still got to set out what we were supposed to do. You know, it is now six o'clock. We started on this adventure about eight this morning. So I thought it was going to be an easy half day thing because I'm on vacation. Didn't want to work all day, but yeah, like that's going to happen. So we still got to fix the dump trailer and the small flatbed. So I'm going to get the rest of this buttoned up. All right. So 
I'm not gonna do the dump trailer, I'm not gonna do the flatbed. I'm gonna do that this weekend. I don't plan to haul them, so they don't need to get done. But this thing here needs something done with it. So I'm gonna get it done because I need to use it tomorrow. Yeah, I know, once again, on vacation, but can't seem to stop. I need to spray my properties. So what I'm gonna do is this here I need to put new clips or I'm gonna put it directly on the battery I'm not sure yet how I'm gonna hook it all up but the battery it needs a better strap down method because well bungee cord just broke but the bungee cord wasn't cutting it anyway so i need to do something strap it down a little better and i need to make this to where i can plug it into my truck and i can also just plug these in to the battery so let me uh gather my thoughts here and we'll get after it All right, so I got it wired up. I ended up changing this plug out and just putting an actual plug on it because I want to be able to do it. And I do think that I'm, no, I don't do think, I am gonna leave the battery on here. So we're gonna mount it down a whole heck of a lot better than what it has been for the last two years. Because what I want to be able to do is when I, I run around my yard with it on the tractor, I am having a heck of a time with my camera mount here, but I run around a lot of time with it on my tractor. If I take it in my truck, well, then I can make this work two ways. So I can plug it in and then it will charge the battery as well. 
So that's a plus because that battery is two years old. I've never threw it on charger. And I ran all last summer with this setup and all this summer so far with this setup. But another thing with leaving it in, I can put it into bed of that work truck or that work truck or any of the other work trucks and we can go spray. It will have a battery power cell. This is the way I'm gonna leave it set up. So now I'm gonna, I need to get this mounted down more permanent, the, the battery itself. And then I got a, I'm gonna extend the hose and make it to where I can use, put in a 50 footer on it. I have this one. <laughs> I had an idiot attack. This is my first one I ever got. I had it in the bucket of the tractor and I dumped it out and broke the thing. I got a new pump for it, but I just haven't got around to putting it on. So Maddox is bringing out my impact. Yep, set it right there, buddy. Thank you. Mommy stole my impact. So I'm going, the green hose is gonna be the extension hose. So we're gonna see how we can get all this uh, onto there. And we'll bring you guys back up to speed here in a few. All right, let's prime this thing up and see if it works. Get back, buddy. Get back, I don't want you in this stuff. All right, well, we got a little leak right there, but she's still pushing pressure, so we're gonna call that a win for right now, and then we'll, uh, we'll fix that better, because I still need to come back and put different fittings on there, because I had the electrical tape them, because I didn't have, uh, the right size so i'm gonna wrap this up load it up and if i remember tomorrow i will uh take you guys along and see if this fixes it or it doesn't fix it but it works so that's gonna be it for this video don't forget to like subscribe and comment